Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God. Amen. Bless the Lord God. Let's give the Lord God a hand of praise. Amen. All right. We want to welcome you here to the Gift from God Worship Center. It is Sunday, January 9th, and we are here at 1 o'clock on Sundays, and we're here on Fridays at 6 p.m. for our weekly Bible class. And you are welcome to come into the building to fellowship with us. And you can also find us, as you're seeing us right now, on your YouTube page from um, Gift from God Postcard Ministry. And um, we are located at 24 Colonia Downs Place in Alberta, Virginia, 23821. And we appreciate all your support. And... Um, for your donations, you may do so by using our cash app. It's dollar sign GFG Bible Conference. Dollar sign GFG Bible Conference. Which, by the way, is coming up on March the 5th. Our next Bible Conference. Hearsay, Controversy, and Truth. March the 5th, 2022. Right here at the Gift from God Worship Center at 11 a.m. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. If there's any opening announcements, songs, Old and New Testament readings, testimonies, any other announcements, anything that's on your hearts, mind, spirits, you may do so this time. Bless the Lord. Um, I just wanted to, well, I first give my honors to my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank him for my life. I thank him for this day. I thank him for being who he is, for he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And I just want to share some thoughts I'm always thankful and grateful for everything that the Lord do for me in my life, and my family, and my home, you know, my whole surroundings. I'm always thankful and grateful for, for the Lord God is a continued provider. He's a continued way maker. He's a continued peacemaker. And I just want to share a few of my thoughts, if I may. and. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the enemy, his job, his purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. It's to steal, kill, and destroy. And guess what? If you're wondering out there, if you're ready to follow Christ, the enemy is going to know about it. And his job is going to be to keep you from coming into the house of prayer or from doing anything that's relating to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So any urgency that you have to, you know, turn your life around, the enemy is going to come upon you that much stronger. And just from experience, I just want to tell you that you, you're just going to have to fight through it. You're going to have to fight through it. Because the urge or, you know, the temptations or even the desire to just keep doing what I'm doing, you know, because you're comfortable, you know, in, in how your lifestyle is. But you know deep down that you need to change. So you, you got to fight for, for it. You know, he ain't going to let you go, Satan, that is. He's not going to let you go that easy. You know, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord God, he comes that we may have life. For he is the truth, the way, and the life. Bless the Lord God. Amen. There will be mountains that I will have 
to climb and there will be battles that I will have to fight victory or defeat is up to me to But how can I expect to win if I never try? I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he's brought me this far to lead me. Never said there wouldn't be trials, never said I wouldn't fall. Never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go. But when my back is against the wall and I feel all hope is gone, I just lift my head up to the sky and say, help me to be strong. I just can't give up now. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this to leave me no you didn't bring me right here to leave me lonely even when I can't see clearly I know that you are with me so I can I just can't in my life. Bless the Lord God. to keep you in the world, to keep you uncovered. Anything he can think of to keep you, you know, not in a right way. Bless the Lord God. 
faster. Yeah, but a lot of people say they don't want to. They don't want to come out the world. They don't want you to take Satanism from them. They don't want to talk to you about change. Because they talk to you about change, they find out that they're wrong. So they don't want to stop. It might look like a lot of people don't know what's going on, but they, they do. They don't want to change. So that's what I'm in like. I don't know if I'm saying I'm in fear about it, but it don't sit well. Right. Knowing that the Lord got to come back and he got to deal with your family members. Right. Close family, cousins. Right. That you want to see go to heaven that might not go. Or might not make it. They just don't care about God. Don't care nothing about God. Nothing. No more than to ask for a blessing when they in pain or hurting or something like that, where they can't continue to do what they're doing. Right. Anytime some affect what they're doing is when they decide they're going to call on the Lord. But right. other than that, I don't, I don't think a lot of people don't know what they're doing. I think they're very clear. Right. Just for me being on the street. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. We're going to thank him continually here. And we're going to bless him. <sighs> I'm just so passionate about the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Don't feet, folks. I'm so passionate about the Lord. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's difficult to understand why people don't seek him. Mm -hmm. Because he, if the word said they should call his name wonderful. Mm -hmm. And God is wonderful. He's merciful. He's, he's gave his life for, for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gave it up for me. You know, and I'm thankful to the well, Lord. It's, it's somebody in every state, just like Solomon and Gamora. It's somebody in every United States that's seeking God's face. It's the reason this country's still standing right now. Mm. It's in a lot of chaos, but the chaos come because the Lord has to keep sin at bay. He's not gonna wipe it all out. He might flood some, he might burn down some, he might put volcano in some, he might coronavirus some, he might flu some. He keeps sin at bay. Anytime you see sin gathering itself to Lord together, the Lord always say, Let me go down and see if this thing so. <laughs> he said, Let me go down now and see the workings of man's hands. And when he come down, trust me, all heaven is watching and wondering what the almighty God gonna do. Because uh -huh. <laughs> every time he came there, he did something too. He did something, he don't he just show just up. He coming to look. <laughs> he coming to look. He already know, he already said, I'm going down to see if this thing so. Uh -huh. Them angels said, God, they, um, they doing this on the earth and they doing this on the earth, but you have not told us what we must do concerning this matter. <laughs> he said, we know that you know all and see all, mm -hmm. but you have not instructed us what we must do concerning this matter. <laughs> so I'm just scared for <laughs> folks myself. But I do know that the Lord says it's gonna be a few folks every, every county, every state, there's somebody there seeking God's face. It's the reason the place is being spared by whatever amount that it is being spared by. Mm -hmm. So I just thank the Lord continuous. Amen. 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 Glory to the Almighty God. God is not dead. <laughs> yeah, I hear people call me sometimes. They say, always send me texts late at night. I said, they must be feeling themselves now. <laughs> Two o'clock at night, send me a text message. God dead. God is dead. 
They know how I am about God. God is dead. Want to stir me up in the middle of the night. God is dead. Send me text message. God is dead. I look at it laugh and go on back to sleep. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. That was somebody needed some help. Uh, um, let's go to an Old Testament reading in the book of Joel. Okay. Joel and it's chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Verse 13. And rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Bless the Lord. That was Joel chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Amen? Yeah, he said he wants you to rent your heart this time and not your clothes. clothes. He wants your heart rented this time, not your clothes. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. Your heart. All right, New Testament reading in the book of Romans. Chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Mm -hmm. Verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Verse 8. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Verse 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Mm -hmm. Death hath no more dominion over him. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. For in that he died... He died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Amen. Verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ our, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 6. Verses 6 through 11. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hello. All right. All right. Is there anyone else who may have an announcement, any testimony, a song, anything else that, that you have right now? Pass you on prayer, Glory be to the Almighty God. Lord God, thank you again for another day, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for your Holy Ghost Spirit that continues to lead, God. Lord God, direct us into all truth, Lord God. We want to thank you another day, time, Lord God, on today for the blessings of the people, Lord God, that hopefully, Lord God, they hear your word, see your way, Lord God, knowing that we have but a short time, Lord God, right now. I'm also thanking you, Lord God, for all those that has passed on, Lord God. We pray that in, the, in Christ, may they be covered by the blood, Lord God. Thank Lord God, I want to thank you for all things in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. All right. Pastor has prayed us in, and we are now ready to get started with the lesson. Um, Pastor John. 
That's good, Pastor Hank. Worship Center. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord. And we back again to um, try to get back into Genesis chapter 5. Mm -hmm. And of course, y'all already know I'm already excited about Christ yesterday. Not today. Amen. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about Christ before I get here. All right, so uh, we're going to keep y'all too long today, so we back in Genesis chapter 5. And I wanted to skip through a little bit, but as I was rereading Genesis again last night, there's not a real a whole lot I can skip, so we're going to probably have to just keep going. Um, let me go. Yeah, we're in Genesis chapter 6. Okay. All right, so that behind your seats, and we'll get started. Okay, so we are um, still discovering where the people came from in the beginning of time, where Cain got his wife from. Did all the people come from Adam and Eve? Mm -hmm. Um. After the flood, did they all come from Ham, Sham, and Japheth? Mm -hmm. Or how did the people uh, repopulate the earth after the flood? Okay, so let's go with Genesis chapter 6 so we can get going real quick. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Uh -huh. Verse 2. He said, daughters was born unto what? Unto the men. Unto men. Because we know in Scripture, most of the time, the Scripture is really talking about men. It wasn't really talking a lot about daughters. So read that again. Verse 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Uh -huh. And daughters were born unto them. And daughters was born unto them. They started having what? Women coming about. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's keep going. Verse 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Uh -huh. And they took them wives of all which they chose. He said, the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they was what? Pretty. Huh? That they was fair. Pretty. They was pretty, they say. Beautiful. <laughs> they was pretty, I guess. Hmm. And? How you get that? That they was fair. So fair mean pretty? Or decent? They How was, do you want to look at it? They was easy. Oh. <laughs> they they kind of look like you. Okay. Like you easy on, on the eyes. <laughs> yeah, but even when they find that the girls was pretty, they needed to have more than one. Right. <laughs> I, and I just saw some in this in this thing too, Pastor. Uh -huh. It said that they took them wives of all which they chose. Uh -huh. So they took, that means they, they didn't have the father's blessings. Uh -huh. They took they took the women. Right. So that to me talk about says to me like if I may say like rape. Uh huh. Kind of sort of. Uh huh. Because in those days when 
when you know when you slept with a woman, you know you they was that woman was considered to be your wife, right. you know, but they took them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about too. I didn't had that lesson planned yet, <laughs> but I wanted to talk about when people have abortions. Mm -hmm. They say, well, John, if a person be raped, should they have an abortion? I'm like, no, mm -hmm. because there could be times. I know a lot of people have never probably thought about this mm -hmm. or don't like to hear it. Mm -hmm. But there could be some times where the husband come home and want to rape his wife. Mm -hmm. Or she might be like, well, I don't feel like doing that tonight. Mm -hmm. And he'd be like, nah, I want it. Well, he going to force her or he might slap her or something, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he actually forcing mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. But that's not a message for another day. But, but, he's, he's actually doing, but he actually doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if you have a child then, you're not going to get rid of that child. Mm -hmm. Even though you was forced, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You still brought forth the child. That's a whole different message. And every life has purpose. Right. Every life. Right. So we're going to get into that today. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a lot of people that's born and their mother's not telling the children that that's how they got him. Mm -hmm. So I tell people all the time, if you want to say to a person, um, well, I'm gonna abort you, or I'm gonna have a, an abortion, right? I should wait 15 years to tell a child when they get 15, say, oh, I forgot to kill you, I'm a, I gotta do it now. Mm. <laughs> mm. And see how they feel about, at 15, how they feel about you trying to kill them because you was raped or something. Mm -hmm. How would they feel about that if they 15? Mm -hmm. They're gonna be like, well, I'm sorry, you ain't gonna kill me. <laughs> they are, now that they can speak, they're gonna tell you, you're not gonna kill me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you happen or whatever happened, but I'm letting you know you ain't killing me. And but while the child's a baby, it don't have no force. Right. They don't have no voice. They don't have no voice. So that's why you always have these people trying to speak up for abortion. Mm -hmm. Because the child don't have a voice. Mm -hmm. But when that child gets 15, go back and tell the child, no, I'm going to take your life now. Mm -hmm. And see what kind of fight you get. Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, no, nah, you ain't taking my life. Okay, you had a, uh, you was right. Okay, you ain't taking my life. Mm -hmm. They're going to let you know right now, no, nah, you ain't taking my life. So that's why my stance on abortion the way it is, mm -hmm. my stance on marriage the way it is, and guess what? I ain't changing. Mm -hmm. I ain't changing. Amen. I ain't gonna change. Well, who is to give our life? But I ain't changing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I guess I am. But anyway, let's keep going. We'll talk, we'll do a message on that one day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so like I said, here at the Gift from God Worship Center, we try to make sure we cover all Top. topics, mm -hmm. right? Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Read that again for me. Genesis chapter 6, verse 2. Uh -huh. That the sons of God sought the daughters of men that they were fair, uh -huh. and they took them wise of all which they chose. Okay, keep going. We're going to come back to that. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. He said, my spirit shall not always strive. He's going to strive with me. He won't strive with me at first, though. Mm -hmm. But right now, his spirit going to what? It's going to strive with me. Mm -hmm. What that mean? He's going to be in sync. I'm going to walk with God. Walk with God. I'm going to walk mm -hmm. with God. That's why you heard in Scripture when it said that Adam had a son named Self. And then men begin, what? To follow after God. All men don't follow God. Let's keep going. Oh my God. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh my God. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, uh -huh. for that he also is flesh. Uh -huh. Yet his days shall be in a hundred and twenty years. Your days is a hundred and twenty years. If you make a hundred and twenty. Mm -hmm. But now we know you get three scores and ten, mm -hmm. which is what? Sixty? Seven. Seventy. 
three scores, so score, so let's be below the score is a score is how many? 20. 20. Mm -hmm. One score is 20. Some people call it a generation. Mm -hmm. Each generation. So each score is 20, and three scores is 60, and 10 makes what? 70. 70 yields. So if you make 70 yields, start doing like that. Amen. <laughs> when you get to 70, start clapping your hands. Amen. And if you're going past 70, it's because you probably exercise, watch what you eat. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord said it's going to be there with what? Reasonable strength. <laughs> and also, you want to have two what? A walk with God. A walk with God. Because that's also. I can tell people, that's why people are in there talking about don't pay your tithe. Tithes can mean more years added to your life. Mm -hmm. You don't pay tithes to get in return. You pay a tithe from that you what? Already received. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Not from what you're going to get now. It's right. from what you already don't okay. get. Right. You pay no tithe for looking for something. Mm -hmm. Don't pay no tithe to God looking for God to give me nothing. Mm -hmm. The tithes are from what he what? He said, okay. can't sit and lie in the door. You already got black. Now, this is what you offering me? Right. <laughs> okay. Now don't focus mess y'all up. Tell me I don't pay tax. Mm. Let us keep going. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. Uh-huh. There were giants in the earth in those days. Uh-huh. And also after that, uh -huh. when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, uh -huh. and they bare children to them, uh-huh. The same became mighty men, which were of old, uh -huh. men of renown. Okay, read that one more time. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Uh -huh. And also after that, uh -huh. when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, uh -huh. the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. What he's saying now, he's in verse 2. In verse 2, he said that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they was fair. Mm -hmm. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Mm -hmm. Verse 4 said what? There was what? Giants mm -hmm. in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men. Mm -hmm. And when the sons of God here, verse 4, we're talking about what? The angels. The fallen angels. Mm -hmm. The fallen angels. They went in and made it with the women. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, because the Lord has to keep sin to a base, when sin start trying to overtake the earth, then the Lord got to do what? Cleanse. Mm -hmm. That's why he bought the flood, so he could flood all of the, all of the men that was taking wives. And then he also flooded the earth because of all the sin nature. And he also flooded the earth because the giants had slept with what? The women. And the women, children, was being like, you see people on the internet sometimes, they like to see it, feet tall, eight feet tall, mm -hmm. might be a little seed line or something. Mm -hmm. They became giants. I just to thought the about Andre the Giant. Uh huh. <laughs> might be a little blood there. <laughs> uh, might be a little blood there somewhere. Might be a little seed line. And we're gonna talk about that too as we get down to the flood. All right, let's go one more. Verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. He saw the wickedness of man was great. Nobody following God. Everybody has their own what? Pleasures. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, uh -huh. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Uh -huh. Verse 6, And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, uh -huh. and it grieved him at his heart. Uh -huh. 
Verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast, and the creeping thing, mm -hmm. and the fowls of the air. Uh -huh. For it repented me that I have made them. Uh -huh. Do God have a heart? Do God have a heart? Do God have a heart with blood running in it, pumping? I don't know what kind of heart he has. Huh? Yeah. I don't know what kind of heart he has, but he have a heart. Uh huh. He just said he did. Right. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of heart it was. Uh huh. You know. Yeah, in the some. flesh, in the flesh, yeah, he did uh -huh. when he was transformed. But in his supreme what are we being form. Right now? Yeah, in his supreme being form, I can't say that he had a human heart. Well, he don't have a human heart. Right. Yeah, he don't have a heart like we have. Right. He had a feelings and everything, you know, just like it's just spiritual. Right. It's not physical. Right. Right. Because you can love a person just like you can love a person spiritually, not physically. Mm -hmm. You don't have to actually have them, hug them. Mm -hmm. It's just in your heart. Mm -hmm. That you love a person spiritual without mm -hmm. touching them. Mm -hmm. You might see somebody you like, you never touched them. Don't even know them. Don't even know their name. Mm -hmm. Just in you. Right. You know? Let's keep going. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Somebody found grace in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. Even before the law was given, the people knew what was right and wrong in the sight of God, mm -hmm. even before the law was given. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Uh -huh. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. He was what? Perfect. He was what? Perfect. He was what? Perfect. Nobody perfect? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep reading. <clears throat> Verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Uh -huh. And Noah walked with God. Uh -huh. Verse 10. So when we say perfect, we're not saying that we are without faults. We are saying that we striving. Mm -hmm. We are striving, meaning that there's not something that I see that I know God don't like that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I got everything together, mm -hmm. but I know in my mind, if I see something that I know is not right in the sight of God, I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah. And maturity. Right. That's why people always say they want a, a man after God's own heart, right? Mm -hmm. Because once you get a person after God's own heart, they're going to know how to do what? Treat you. They're going to know how to treat your heart. <laughs> because they have what? The fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because see, when I get the fear of the Lord, I know how to treat a woman because now I'm not looking at what she's thinking about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at uh, my phone. She called me and I ain't returning the call. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at that. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the fact that I feel this fear behind me that the Lord is acknowledging that she calling me mm -hmm. and I ain't calling her back. I ain't worried about whether she know it or not. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about whether God know it or not. Mm -hmm. So now I can't even sleep around on my wife. Where we you? Now you can't sleep around on your wife. Because you're not worried about whether she know it or not. You're worried about whether God, God know it or not. Mm -hmm. You don't care that about what she thinking. She knows she got the man of God. She knows the man of God and the right will of God. She ain't worried about what you're doing after that. Once she know you walk with God, she ain't worried about what you're doing out there at no club, at no party. Mm -hmm. She ain't worried about all that stuff. Right. She know you got the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Somebody call you up. When, when John was over there talking to her, she's going to be like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> you already know what happens to him if you do something in the sight of God. You already know what's going to happen. Right. I don't need to educate him. Right. Equally yoke mm -hmm. what we're saying. 
in Christ. In Christ. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter 6, verse 10. Uh -huh. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh -huh. Verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, mm -hmm. and the earth was filled with violence. Uh -huh. Is it filled with violence now? We got tsunamis in just by every country. Mm -hmm. We got people dying thousands at a time. I've been telling people for the last, what, three or four years, you're going to start seeing the hill. Mm -hmm. Not 20, not 30, 100, 200, 300, 1,000. All at once. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord got to keep this thing, what? Clean. Got to mm -hmm. keep this thing at a base that he called. Mm -hmm. So now you got to clean your house. So now it's almost like he don't care which age you is now. Right. Don't care about your age. You don't care about your debt you putting on your house. Mm -hmm. You don't care about you washing your car. Mm -hmm. He ain't care about you getting ready to go on a date either. Mm -hmm. You could be in a movie theater, somebody come and get you out of there. Mm -hmm. He don't care. That's why people going with him there. He don't care about your age. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Uh huh. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. What flesh? All of it. All flesh has corrupted itself. When you say all flesh, he talking about what? The animals. Everything has corrupted itself. Mm -hmm. He's got to clean this thing up now. Let's keep going. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. The end of what? All flesh. Okay, just want to make sure we, we that's our key for the day. Mm -hmm. The all. end of all flesh. No matter who you is. Right here at the end of this grace, what that thing just said? Read it again. And God verse 13. And God said unto Noah. The end of all flesh it's gonna is happen come. Again. It's going to happen again. We, we close to this now. It's coming up to God now because the earth is what? Violent. Oh, it's corrupting else. itself. We got everything under the sun going on. Mm -hmm. We got people up in D.C. giving laws for homosexuality. So we're at what? We're at the end now. Mm -hmm. The Lord says come to him now. He got to do what? He got to do what with the flesh? Destroy. Read it again. Verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. The end of all flesh have come before God. What? Again. The end of all flesh. So when God show up, what you gonna do? What he gonna do to you? When he show up, he gonna do what? Transform you. Your flesh gonna be what? No more. Mm. I'm gonna change it now. I'm gonna clean your house. And when Christ comes, he's gonna do what? Everything that's not serving him, what? Going to the pits. Mm -hmm. Everything not serving Christ going to what? Hell. What are we trying to get to? Heaven. We're trying to get to what? The throne. To the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get to the kingdom, trying to do what? Trying to press our way to the mark of the high call of God. So, John, what do you mean by pressing your way to the high call of God? <laughs> like I was just saying, anything in my sight that I see, that I feel is not pleasing to God, <laughs> I'm not doing it. Can't get away. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm scared now. Why well, you be scared? You ain't scared of no man, John, but this ain't no man. <laughs> this ain't no man. <laughs> ain't no man. <coughs> and John, you scared of no man. This ain't no man. <laughs> I remember they did that thing on that predator. I was thinking the same thing just now. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. They did that thing on that predator. He said something out there. there. And it ain't he said no about man. a few men. What, it's a few men. He said, no, nah, it's something out there. He said, we all going to die. <laughs> He said, something out there, it ain't no man. 
He said, we all gonna die. <laughs> he said, we all gonna die. There's some out there, and it ain't no man. <laughs> Let us keep going. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Uh -huh. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Uh -huh. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I will destroy them with the earth. What did he mean he's going to destroy the earth? What did he say? He said, I'm going to destroy them with the earth. The earth still here and the flood came. What did he mean I'm going to destroy them with the earth? What is he saying? All of my substance yes. in the beginning, right. the first days of creation, all of my substance that I have created when he came, the earth was about what? Form and forward. And forward. Mm -hmm. He said, now I'm going to destroy all of us, and then I'm going to do what? I'm going to set it back up again. I'm going to set it back up. So everything that's not following God, what? I'm going to kill it off. So that's why I be telling people, if they don't think God real, I don't know what to say for you. Let's keep going. Verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh -huh. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, uh -huh. and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. He said, uh, he said what? He said, make me an ark. He said what? He said, make me an ark. I'm going to kill the evil. Mm. That what he said? He said, make me an ark, Noah. I'm going to do what? Destroy, destroy what? Destroy the people with earth. All flesh. Mm -hmm. He said, all flesh. Read 13 again. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. I got to clear everything. Keep going. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Uh -huh. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Uh -huh. Verse 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Mm -hmm. Room shalt thou make in the ark. Can the United States army stop? He said, I'm going to destroy all flesh. Can the, can the United States stop? Nope. They got nuclear bombs. They can't stop. They can't shoot a bomb at God and block them and stop. They can't stop the angels. Can Russia help them? Nope. <laughs> what about China? How about all three of them get together? Nope. So can they stop? Nope. They can't stop either. Well, at first he's going to tell them to, to make a weapon out of something that, that's not his. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he might stay back a minute and say, oh, y'all might need North Korea. <laughs> y'all yeah, might need South Korea. Y'all yeah, might need to call the uh, UK or somebody. <laughs> but y'all can't stop them. Keep going. Verse 14. <clears throat> make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, mm -hmm. and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Amen. Verse 15. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. Mm -hmm. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, mm -hmm. and the height of it 30 cubits. Uh -huh. Verse 16. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. Amen. Verse 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, mm -hmm. wherein is the breath of life. Who? Wherein is the breath of life. That's your key for the day. Wherein is the breath of life. We say he did it to Adam. He did what? He breathed into his what? Nostrils. Keep going. 
wherein is the breath of life uh -huh. from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Uh -huh. verse, eight, verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant. Uh -huh. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Uh -huh. Verse 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, uh -huh. two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark uh -huh. to keep them alive with thee. Uh -huh. They shall be male and female. Uh -huh. Verse 20. Okay, you said what now? <coughs> Read that again. Verse 19. And of every living thing of all flesh, uh -huh. two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark uh -huh. to keep them alive with thee. Uh -huh. They shall be male and female. I remember when I first started the ministry, everywhere I went, people used to say, um, they, used to, they always used to say the Lord put two of all kind on the ark. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, he didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, he didn't. So he didn't do that? Yeah, he did do that, but that ain't all he did, though. That ain't all he did. Oh. But everybody always used to say it was two of all every kind but i always tell people no it's probably like eleven eleven of each kind or something like that because um like i said back then i was really into studying so lately a lot of people started thinking, jump down to seven real seven two real quick 14, we'll come back 14. seven two um genesis chapter seven verse two uh -huh. of every clean beast Thou shalt take to thee by sevens. Every clean beast <laughs> that went on the ark, he had to take by what? By sevens. By sevens. And the unclean, he took by what? Two. Why? Why? Why did Why he get seven of the unclean? Well, of the clean? Huh? The clean is by seven. Uh -huh. The unclean by two. Uh -huh. So, what's your question? Why he only took two and not seven? Oh, why he only took two and not seven of the unclean? Uh huh. I don't know. <laughs> but I just saw something else. I just saw the creation again mm -hmm. because in the beginning when he made man in his image um, we just saw that um, in verse in chapter 5 mm -hmm. that male and female created he them mm -hmm. you know Adam them mm -hmm. he referred to Adam as them and then he just said to Noah mm -hmm like he did with Adam, that he's gonna set up again his covenant with with um, Noah's line. Mm -hmm. Just like he did in the beginning. Right. So yeah, I just, covenant gonna be with Noah. Yeah, so I see the creation all over again. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so go back to um, 19. Genesis chapter six, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And of every living thing of all flesh, mm -hmm. Two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. Two, Two of every what? Every sort. Every sort? Every sort. Uh-huh. Okay. So is people different sorts? Yeah. Or they just one sort? Oh. They two sorts or one sort? Or many sorts. Okay question. What's happening? So why did he only keep two? Hmm? Why did he only keep two unclean? Well, it probably took two of um, the unclean because unclean you can't eat. You can't eat the unclean. So they still had to have food. So they need to have more for food and they also had to have 
some to replenish the earth too. So back then you couldn't eat things that was unclean. Okay, but if just like we were just talking about, you said that he was now he's starting to clean up, you know. Uh huh. So if he's starting to clean up and they're unclean, why are they still, you know? He want to keep on, like I said, the Lord always want to keep things to a minimum. So now, if it was a hundred of things that was unclean, they have overpopulated some. He only just want two of them now, right. so that they can still exist. Just want to continue to exist. Like all the lions might have got crazy or something. So he was like, okay, no, I'll just give me two lions. So when they when the people start repopulating the earth, they won't have to deal with a thousand lions. Because once they come off of that boat, all their sin, all the evil stuff that's in the atmosphere, gonna recreate itself again over there. Yeah, everything's still gonna go back to where it was. So, um, why they on the boat though? Why they on the boat? It's gonna be just like um, in the beginning. On the boat, it's gonna be just like the new creation when God created in the beginning. Just on the boat now. On the boat in the beginning, nothing fought against its family or anything that existed. Lions didn't fight against no chickens or nothing. So on the boat, everything had resumed itself back like it was in the beginning. The Lord said not even a dog can wag his tail or something. Keep going. Any more questions? Genesis chapter 6, verse 19. Uh -huh. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark uh -huh. to keep them alive with thee. Uh -huh. They shall be male and female. Uh -huh. Verse 20. Of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, uh -huh. of every creeping thing of the earth, after his kind. Was he not supposed to take something? Was Noah, was it up to Noah? We knew that giant was on the earth at this time, right? Mm -hmm. Was they clean or unclean? Probably unclean. They probably was unclean. Because they was impure. Was he supposed to take two? Or was he not supposed to take two? He was supposed to take of every sort. Huh? Yeah. You're going to take two of everything, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You got to take two of everything. Mm -hmm. On the boat to keep what? Alive. Sea alive. Because the sea is in itself. That's why I keep telling people, you can't take black folks and make Chinese people. And not even just two, Pastor. Not even just two of them. It's like when we do get to chapter 7. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens. Mm -hmm. Of every beast that are not clean, by two. Mm -hmm. The male and this female. Right. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it, even if it's unclean, I still got to have a pair. Mm -hmm. We got to keep the seed in itself. In an in a unclean period, even if it's unclean, it has to be a male and female. Got to be male, male female. and female. Yeah, gotta be male and female. Because that's how you be fruitful and multiply. Right. Of all sorts, though. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what are you saying, Minister John? Because uh, um, a lot of people have been trying to figure this stuff out for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So, here you come up in 2022 <laughs> trying to tell us <laughs> that more people was on this boat than the eight. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get there. Get there in a few minutes. Amen. We ain't gonna do it today though. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, we about to finish. We got one or two more verses to go. Amen. Yeah, but we're gonna show how the people got on the boat. The eight that was sea lined mm -hmm. from Adam. Mm -hmm. God made his what? Covenant. Covenant. Mm -hmm. 
with Noah. But he also had a covenant with all flesh too. Because he said he would not destroy all flesh again. Mm -hmm. But we'll get to that as right. we go. Amen. Let's keep going. Genesis chapter 6 verse 20. Uh -huh. Of fowls after their kind. After their kind. Uh -huh. And of, <coughs> of cattle after their kind. Uh -huh. Of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Uh -huh. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Uh-huh. Every sort shall come unto me to keep sea alive. Even if I looked at something and I ain't like it, the Lord said, what? Two of all sorts. So if two giants come, I'm like, nah, man, y'all ain't getting on the boat. Y'all come there from, y'all slept with woman. Y'all a giant. Now, y'all ain't getting on him. Can I stop? <laughs> Uh, what if they said, well, we come in male and female, we trying to be saved, just two of them. I got to put them on there? So how you determine what two you pick, though? I think that, that God kind of lay it or auction or ex inspired. Like sometimes you can leave home and you might say, well, no, I'm going to go this way. Then some of us say, no, I'll go this way. Then you might go that way anyway, even though I told you not to go that way. <laughs> but it's still, it's spiritual. The Lord telling everything what he wants it to do. Mm -hmm. And it's going to that heart. That, that reminds me of what we said on, it was, I don't know if it was Friday or, or if it was last Sunday or whatever. Uh -huh. we, you said that when, when God speaks to his creation, right. the whole the whole creation here. God knows ants language, birds language, you know, everything language. However they talk, he you know their language. So he can say to two snakes, go this way. Go over there to that boat. You see that boat? Get on that big boat. Mm -hmm. Or you see two frogs? See that big boat? Get on that, get on that boat. Mm -hmm. You know how to talk to them. You, know, you talk to your dog, you tell your dog, get over there, dog go. <laughs> <laughs> but it learn your language though. Mm -hmm. Let's go, we got one or two more. Verse 21. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, uh -huh. and thou shalt gather it to thee, uh -huh. and it shall be for food for thee uh -huh. and for them. Uh -huh. Verse 22. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen. Now, when I was looking at this, I said, God, how did Noah and his eight <laughs> feed all these animals every day? Every day. How did they feed all of these animals every day? For 40 days. I said, God, you know how many animals here of two of every kind? How they going to feed all them animals every day? He said, John, you got a bigger problem than that. Because right, you right, know right. more than two of each kind that went on the, on the boat. Right, right, right. <laughs> so I said, yeah, it is more than uh, two on there. So now I'm saying, how he going to feed all these two of each kind? He said, yeah, but you said it more than two. So now how he going to feed them? So who was Noah's eight? Who was that? That was his three sons and their wives. Oh, the wife, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody else go. So now, um, we're just trying to get everybody to be a part of God's family. Mm -hmm. Because again, he got to come back and people going to be what? Go. go. So, going to be go. I'm sad for him, trying to cry out for him, but I don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. All right. Any more questions before we end? All right, this is going to conclude chapter 6. And then uh, our next lesson, we'll pick up on chapter 7. Hopefully, we'll do 7 and 8. Hopefully. I don't know. Depends on how the Lord will move. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 Amen